Uh, thank you, Press Secretary, and good night to citizens of Grenada, Kaiku, and P.T. Martinique, uh, to those who are viewing online and to those in the diaspora. I want to say also good night to those who are listening and looking at us regionally and internationally. And I want to start off by uh, asking us to keep our brothers and sisters in Kaiku and P.T. Martinique and in the Grenadine Islands uh, in our thoughts and prayers. And I say this because we have had, uh, since early afternoon, very little communication uh, from Karakou and PT Martinique. Uh, virtually all of the communication uh, that we are accustomed to is done, uh, both uh, cell phones, uh, internet data, uh, VHF radio. Uh, we are also trying uh, ham radio. We are also trying satellite phones. Uh, but the communication has been uh, scant at best. And as you would recognize from the various briefings that have gone before, we have very little uh, information as to the exact state of play in Clarik 1 PT Martinique. And so we will continue to monitor the situation and continue to get, uh, attempt to get uh, communication and contact established with uh, Clarik 1 PT Martinique. If we are not able to do so uh, overnight, we certainly will, first thing in the morning uh, at daybreak, uh, send uh, the Coast Guard to Karakou to be able to do an assessment. Uh, because it is, it is dark night and because we suspect there may be significant uh, amounts of debris uh, in the water, we have decided not to send them tonight uh, because we want to make sure uh, that we don't endanger uh, the life uh, and limb of uh, our security personnel. So again, uh, I want to emphasize that at this point, we do not have uh, any accurate information as to the state of play in Karakou and Piti Martinique. Uh, we are aware that there is no power. Uh, we also are aware that communication is down. And from earlier in the day, we are quite clear that the uh, destruction and the damage has been quite uh, devastating. When last I spoke with Minister Tevin Andrews, he had indicated that save for the uh, emergency operating center, that almost everything else around who had been uh, damaged or significantly destroyed. Um, so yes, while Hurricane Beryl is now passed, it has left clearly a, uh, a part of destruction, a part of damage um, on mainland Grenada, but more so significantly in Karakou and PT Martinique. And I want to emphasize that uh, although the all clear has been given, that the curfew remains in effect until 6.59 a.m. tomorrow, uh, the reason for this is to ensure the continu continued safety and security of our citizens. As you've heard from Grenlick, there are fallen lines uh, mostly in the eastern and north and uh, western parts of the island. And so it is not able to restore electricity uh, in those areas until it is able to properly assess the extent of the damage and the repair work that is necessary. This means that there is a risk uh, to life and limb and we want people therefore to stay off the roads. Uh, we've also heard from the Commission of Police um, that as at least one or one half ago, some parts of the road on the western uh, and uh, northern side had not yet been cleared. And so uh, traversing the road, uh, certainly at least up to an hour and a half ago in those parts, uh, was not permissible. Again, another reason to stay off the roads um, tonight until we're able to make a better assessment of the state of things tomorrow morning. You'd have heard Mr. McIntyre indicated that because the all clear was given at 8 p.m. tonight uh, that we could not give a more thorough damage assessment on mainland Grenada and certainly we are not able to give any assessment at all uh, except for the preliminary reports that we got in relation to Karakou and uh, PT Martinique. So again, the residual effects of the hurricane uh, will persist for a long time and so we need our citizens to exercise caution and care. I will give you some additional uh, updates. The airport has indicated uh, that uh, it has suffered uh, minimal uh, damage or disruption and that it will be in a position uh, to be open at 10 a.m. tomorrow. Uh, the Grenada Ports Authority has also indicated that it will be in a position to be open tomorrow. That's the Port of St. George. Uh, it is not able to give any assessment as to the state of the port in Karakou uh, for the same reasons. Uh, that we've advanced before because of the inability to get any uh, contact or accurate information coming out of uh, Karakou. NAWASA has already given its update and Grenlick has also given its update. 
uh, telecommunication has been severely uh, disrupted as a result of the storms, uh, so much so that even at the National Emergency Operating Center here at NADMA, we also suffered significant disruption for a significant part of this afternoon. And you would have observed that our usual timely briefings, which we normally give, uh, has not occurred this afternoon. And that is because of the disruptions that we faced. Uh, thankfully, uh, the situation has improved and we are now uh, able to communicate uh, more clearly and accurately uh, with you. I want to provide uh, a brief overview of the security situation. The Royal Grenada Police Force indicated uh, that there was no major incidents um, to, of note. The Central Police Station on the Carnage suffered damage to its roof and as a result some water damage and uh, some electrical damage as well. So uh, the necessary precautions have been taken uh, to ensure uh, that we minimize the risk associated to the lawmen who are operating from the Central Police Station and obviously that is one station that we would have to uh, make efforts to begin to uh, repair immediately so that uh, safety is brought to the lawmen. Uh, there was a fallen tree at the residence of the Governor General that has been cleared and I'm happy to say uh, that the Governor General is safe and uh, there is no risk to her safety. Uh, there were some fallen trees at the residence of the Prime Minister. That too has been cleared up and uh, there, is, there is no risk. As you would have heard when the uh, pers person from the Ministry of Health gave its, re its report, uh, we do have regrettably one fatality. Um, that is reported to have occurred at River Road uh, when A3 fell on a home. This hits home uh, because the deceased person is in fact a relative of one of the persons who spent the last 36 hours with us here at the National Emergency Operating Center. I want to take this opportunity to express on my own behalf and behalf of the people of Grenada a profound condolences to the family of the person who've lost their loved one, and it shows that even when persons are here uh, doing human service to the nation at a difficult time, um, that sometimes tragedy can, can strike when you least expect it. And so, uh, again, on our own behalf, we express um, profound empathy and condolences to the family of the victim. Uh, that is the only uh, fatality that we have reported thus far, but bearing in mind the uh, challenge that we have in Carrick and Piti Martinique, uh, we are, are not able to confirm that this is the only fatality. We do hope that uh, there aren't any other fatalities or any injuries to persons as a result of the, the hurricane. I want to point out that uh, we will have a CARICOM emergency heads of uh, government meeting at 10 a.m. tomorrow, uh, partly to uh, coordinate the CARICOM response uh, to the disaster. The meeting will be chaired by uh, President Ofan of uh, Guyana, as you are aware, Grenada was set to assume the chairmanship of uh, CARICOM uh, on Wednesday of this week, uh, but as a result of Hurricane Beryl, we had to cancel the CARICOM meeting, and so uh, President Ali will continue to chair this emergency meeting so that we have a coordinated response uh, to the disaster. I wish to say that, to some extent, we have dodged a bazooka a Category 4, almost Category 5 hurricane is almost as severe as it gets. And save for Kariku and Piti Martinique and the northern part of Grenada, we have escaped largely on scale. We have to be thankful. We have to count our blessings. But this exercise has demonstrated uh, that we have a long way to go in our approach to preparedness for natural disasters. Uh, so we need to appreciate that we live in the hurricane belt. All of the evidence suggests that the storms are going to become more frequent and they are going to be more powerful and strong as Hurricane Beryl has demonstrated. This storm developed into a category four storm in record time. We had very little time to prepare. And so as a nation, we have to come to grips with the reality of where we live and the threats to our existence. And so it is important uh, that when this initial phase is over, that we conduct the necessary debriefing, we conduct the necessary post-mortem, and that we put the necessary systems 
procedures and resources in place to make sure that we continue to minimize risk to life and to property and to our way of life. There have been several persons who have spent the last 36 or more hours at the operations center working on behalf of the citizens of Grenada. I want to take the opportunity to thank them for their service. They have gone above and beyond the call of duty. They have done so at enormous sacrifice to themselves and to their families. And so on behalf of the citizens of Grenada, I express my personal thank you. On behalf of the government of Grenada, I express its thanks for the tremendous work and support that you have given. Uh, this is not over by a long shot. Uh, the National Emergency Advisory Council meeting will, uh, Council will meet at 7.30 a.m. tomorrow uh, to provide a more thorough and uh, thorough review of what the current situation is. As I said, Caracol and P.T. Martinic remains of major concern. Uh, we still have several thousands of persons who are in shelters. Uh, there has been significant damage to homes, and so all of the necessary relief uh, efforts are going to have to be galvanized to make sure uh, that persons are looked after. We are here to serve you. We will continue to do so uh, in the best interests of the citizens of Grenada. This is a time for all of us to unite, to show empathy and solidarity with each other, but not just here in Grenada. Bear in mind that St. Vincent and the Grenadines have also been impacted uh, by the storm. And at this moment, I do not have a report uh, from my colleague, Prime Minister of St. Vincent, and we may have to be prepared to also render assistance to them. So I want us to bear this in mind. I'm sure there are still several areas that we will be required to provide uh, updates on, uh, but I want to take the opportunity to thank the members of the media who have stayed the course with us uh, throughout this period and have been of tremendous significance in ensuring that the public is kept abreast uh, in a timely manner of what was taking place. We have no doubt uh, that this assisted many citizens in staying calm, uh, because you were providing them with timely and accurate information. It has been a long uh, couple of hours. Uh, a lot of persons behind the scene have not slept in the last 36 hours. We certainly want to give them the opportunity to, to do so, uh, to see their families and for them to be able to be back here as early as possible in the morning. So, uh, Presec, again, thank you uh, for being here. Thank you to all of the persons who've made this possible. And I want us to remember we still need to be careful. We still need to be safe. There is another system that is developing in the Atlantic. Uh, the Met Office will continue to brief us on this to make sure that we pay attention to it. Uh, we hope uh, that it dissipates and does not pose any threat to us here in Grenada and to our brothers and sisters within the region. Thank you and do have a good night.